Hello and welcome back. So we just saw moving average filters. And I mentioned that they were a special type of a more general type of filters, which are called finite impulse response filters. So let's go over finite impulse response filters. FIR, finite impulse response. This is a subclass of discrete time, linear time invariant systems. Okay. So the first point I mentioned is FIR filters are generalizations of moving average filters. Well, if you recall, we had an example x of n, well, the, the, the output was an average of the current input, the previous input, and the previous input. So you pick a current input, you scale times one third times the previous input that you have a store in memory and the previous input. Now, even if you just add them together, if you just pick the current input plus the previous input plus the previous input, you will be implementing and a smoother, really a low pass filter. Okay, it, that the output is smoothing. Even if you just add, um, it will be the output though, in that case, will, the amplitude will be three times that, right? You will have a scaling factor. It will be a moving average within a scaling factor. You have not normalized it by the one third, one third, one third. Okay, so we know that this filter is smooth signals. What we will want is to be able to create a more general type of filter that could achieve any frequency response that we desire. And that's the objective of filter design is, okay, if I have a signal and I can see the frequency content and I can differentiate what is signal, what is noise, or what are the characteristics, the signal characteristics, the bandwidth characteristics that I need for my particular application, I want to filter out everything else. I have some specifications on the frequency response, the kind of frequency, how much am I going to attenuate, etc. And I want to be able to realize them. As it turns out, you can realize them with something that looks very much like a moving average filter. But instead of making these coefficients all the same, we allow them to be any value, meaning Instead of being b x of n plus b x of m minus one plus that 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 b x of n minus m, where all of them are identical are the same b, we make them a function, right? We allow them to change. So I'm going to say this is zero, one. So all of them now can assume any variable. We could also write this in compact form. And this is now a sum of b k x of n minus k, right? Where we are going to do k goes from zero to m. This is a compact form of writing. I just noticed that we have the first one will be b of zero for k equals zero, x of n minus k being zero plus b one x of n minus one, the previous sample, plus b two x of m minus two, da 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 da, b m x of m minus m. So notice, you have your input here, it's going to produce an output. By a linear combination here, we have a sum, okay? Of those, the present and previous input, this is a causal implementation, multiplied times 
these filter coefficients v0, v1, v2, all the way to vm. The objective of filter design is going to be giving a frequency response, so objective of filter design is giving a desired frequency response. So this is frequency, and you say, okay, I want that in my passband, there is very little ripple, that it attenuates really fast here, the transition band, that it attenuates more than whatever many dB is, that the my cutoff frequency is whatever we design. So going from a frequency response specification, like this kind of frequency, this pass band, this stop band, this much attenuation. The problem of filter design is from these specs, design inputs to generate a set of BK coefficients. What are the BK coefficients? The filter coefficients, the FIR filter coefficients. And what is remarkable is that you can implement any frequency response with this difference equation, with this type of filter, which you can go to see that it's a very stable and very easy to implement. So in terms of a block diagram, what are the mathematical operations that, that we need in terms of a block diagram to implement this? What are the building blocks, if you will? Well, we can see that we need um, some sort of <coughs> multiplier times a constant. So you have a, an input, x of n, and you need to be able to multiply it as a b coefficient to create b x of n. So we need multipliers. We need some others. So you have an x1 of n and x2 of n, which may be x, x of n minus 1, for instance, a previous value of minus 2. And you produce an output, y of n. So multipliers, scalar multipliers, others, and the delay operation, which you we're going to denote, typically you're going to see it in most DSP textbooks as C to the minus one. That's a delay by one step. And that comes from the C transform that we're going to see later, a very useful transform for discrete time system analysis. So if this is X of M, our output is X of M minus one. So with these three building blocks, a scalar multiplication, meaning an input, we multiply x times b, and we get an output that is b times x of n. An other, and the delay operation, which you need to have a memory to store the previous value, and then in the next cycle, for instance, give it, we are going to be able to implement all finite impulse response filters, as well actually all infinite impulse response filters. So this is all you need. And by the way, when you look at DSP hardware, the reason DSP hardware is so efficient is that it implements architecturally these three building blocks in very efficient archi architectures designed to optimize DSP. Now, for general purpose applications or some DSP system that you're implementing a computer or maybe in a server to do some big data analysis. <clears throat> These building blocks, you have them in the computer. That's why I typically say your, your computer is a full, <clears throat> fully equipped DSP lab and it can implement systems. You can implement an image processing system, a speech processing system, an audio processing system, in your computer, in your server, etc. Why is that? Because this is available in any CPU, right? There is a hardware multiplier that can do the multiplication. There is memory that can handle the delay, and you can add in a CPU, right? The signals are really digital signals, so the computers can understand them, um, and this is available in every CPU. 
Now, a couple of words about real-time implementations. If you are doing a filter implemented for, that needs to do some frequency selective filtering in a real-time application, then you will typically use a DSP, a digital signal processor, and the signal, digital signal processors, what they have been optimized to do is really to implement these three building blocks very efficiently. For instance, this multiplication and this addition, in DSP algorithms, you need to do one after the other very often. And so there is this multiply, accumulate operation, which just to give you an example, this, the C64 DSP processors of Texas, of TI, they are capable of, of doing this multiplication here and this addition one after the other and storing it, like what we have here to implement some of these filters, 2.4 billion billion multiply accumulate operations 16 bit per second and in some significant applications <laughs> you're doing of course image processing or something like that you need to be able to be you are in the some good filters require like a, around a billion more than a billion multiply accumulate operations and so they have been a lot of engineering design has been put into how do you create these fast multipliers or these fast multiply accumulate okay the big picture though right now is that we if you're familiar with filter design from your analog electronic courses where you will use for instance for an active filter one or more of pumps with some capacitors and resistors to create a frequency response. In DSP, you will be able to create gray filters, much better filters, right? And they look like this. It is a weighted average, okay? And the problem of filter design, again, is going from your specs that you want, your kind of frequency, how much you're going to attenuate to creating those BK coefficients, and we will see how to do that and how to implement these filters. Thank you.